Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thy Strong Word. I'm Pastor A.J. Espinosa. We're reading the entire Bible together out loud, book by book, chapter by chapter. It's good to be back in the Gospels looking at Mark chapter 4 today. So this is the first time in Mark that we get, um, I mean, what are described as parables. Um, If you look at the subheadings in your English Standard Version there, you've got a few of them today. You've got the parable of the sower. Um, the purpose of the parables, uh, lamp under a basket, parable of the seed growing, parable of the mustard seed. So a bunch of parables and then closing it out, um, another miracle. Jesus calms a storm, right? Uh, but so the question is, you know, how are these parables now fitting into everything? And, you know, what really counts as a parable, right? Um, you know, was the thing before about you know, a house divided against itself and binding the strong man, right? It's at the end of chapter three. Is that a parable? Um, what does that really mean? Is it, is it necessarily a story where everything represents something or uh, what is, you know, is it, is it a riddle? Is it actually maybe a real life thing? So uh, a lot of things going on today, just trying to figure out, you know, how does this fit in with the bigger message that the authority of Jesus saves? So joining us today, we've got, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm jumping the gun here. Uh, I'm probably scaring our guest. <laughs> that, that's what's in store for tomorrow. Today, before we get to Mark chapter 4, we're looking at Psalm 107. Uh, so there, there's your preview. Without any further ado, though, <laughs> Psalm 107. Uh, today, we've got Pastor Boyce Claire joining us, pastor at Faith and Bethesda Lutheran Churches in Pine Lawn, Missouri. Good morning, brother. Sorry for the small heart attack this morning. How are you doing otherwise? Oh, no, I, I was just going to say, well, what passage of Scripture are we going to look at? Uh, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm ready to ready and raring to go wherever you want to go. Get I'm, a, just, pastor, I'm just so eager to, to get back the into the in gospel. In season and out of season, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still close uh, up here, but uh, we're, we're uh, um, hopefully uh, the county is going to open here in St. Louis, and, and we'll oh, be excellent. able to start services again probably uh, before by the end of the month, God willing, you know. Um, okay. Praise be to God. That's that, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's um yeah, that's a very interesting thing. Just everyone trying to figure out what the best way to go for it is. And uh, yeah, well, just, you know, God grant wisdom to, to all the pastors and congregations trying to be faithful and also caring for a neighbor. But oh, yeah, so in, 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 uh, in 107 here, um, yeah. So, yeah, before we get to Mark, uh, so eager to, to look at those parables tomorrow. So in 107, right, Psalm 107, there are no, there are no parables. Uh, there is maybe something a little bit about a storm in the in the weather here. Yeah. Uh, but and pestilence, but too. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, pestilence. Germane, to the, germane to our situation here. But, yeah, definitely um, uh, just a wonderful piece of liturgical uh, writing in uh, among for God's people or by the power of inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. It starts a whole new book of the Psalms, as you know, uh, the fifth book, or, you know, in other words, the Psalms by the people who put the Psalms together, divided into five books, uh, sort of like in uh, sort of like the Pentateuch. And, and so uh, this right. is, of course, the beginning of what would be Deuteronomy or um and, and you know, there's just many different different ways in which uh, the those who compiled the psalms uh, put them together, and we can talk about that as I guess as we as we look at the psalms. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. And I think it is interesting that it is actually the introductory psalm of Book Five, and uh, I think that, that, that I think that's really abs- I, mean, I don't think I ever heard that there were five books of the Psalms until I went to the seminary. So I, I feel like that's a really obscure detail for a lot of people. Um, you know, you don't really think of you know first Psalms, second Psalms, third Psalms, fourth and fifth Psalms. You know, but that, that's kind of what you have going on here. And so I think we'll have a chance to talk about that as we go along. But without any further ado, would you get us started with uh, an opening prayer, please, for us and for everyone listening along today? as we dive into Psalm 105 before we get back into Mark tomorrow. Absolutely. Let us pray. It is a good thing to give thanks to you, O Yahweh, for your hesed, your steadfast love in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who guides us through the wilderness, releases us from the bondage of Satan, raises us up from a bed of sickness, and brings us as we sail through a sea of troubles to the desired haven guide and direct us to give you all the praise and honor for you live and reign father son and holy spirit one god now and forever amen 
Amen, oh, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and re- and uh, look at and just read this out loud, this Psalm 107 here, um, a, a very full psalm, 43 verses, um, and a, a lot of things going on with the, the structure that we're going to want to talk about, but I think uh, some of those things will just become more apparent once we actually just read it. So uh, we'll start with the um the first verse there's no heading here right so there's no um you know like uh, to the you know choir master or uh, of david or just it goes straight into the thing um which right. uh, i think is worth talking about but before we get which there, is sometimes there's, there's considered the, like the first verse you know like in, well in, yes yeah now and we don't in in our english translation normally that you have the heading that's above there and but but here you have nothing you just it's just it could just jumps right into it as you said right right um so so yeah i mean well well without without spoiling anything more well i'll just i'll just read the thing here here it is psalm 105 in the english standard version Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. But the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them in their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness in the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns the rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. He turns the desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry dwell and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly, and he does not let their livestock diminish. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, evil, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness shuts its mouth. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. So I think, you know, as, as you read it, uh, it kind of uh, kind of speaks for itself what's going on. It, it seems to speak of these 
these different groups, right? It yeah. kind of introduces each of these. You've know, got some, it says here, wandered in desert wastes. Some sat in darkness. Some were fools. Some went down to the sea. Uh, so we got like four different groups here. But in each one of those cases, you have this refrain, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. So that's the refrain, which, of course, um, seems to sort of echo basically the intro introductory verse, right? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. So, I mean, even if that's not the title, it kind of ends up functioning that way, I think, as you were sort of anticipating that. It, it, that, that's the whole theme, you know, give thanks because no matter which one of these four situations might describe you um, or even at the end of the psalm, right, even if maybe you don't feel like it necessarily describes you, well, whoever is wise, attend to these things and let and let yourself then consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Yes, uh, and, and those are, you, you could call them uh, antiphons, you know, a lot of times, the antiphon for the, for the psalm, which is kind of like uh, the liturgical way that this uh, psalm was, was constructed. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's interesting, H.C. Uh, Leupold in his commentary uh, kind of pictures uh, a, a a group of pe- uh, four groups of people in the temple, and a priest is uh, separating each of them. You know, the first group is like uh, people who were uh, leaders of of caravans uh, traveling, maybe maybe to the temple itself, uh, lost and stranded in the wilderness, and so on. The next one would be a group of prisoners or those who had been slaves who were released. Uh, then the next one is now. It's interesting in in. Um, the uh, self-study, our our our, um, um, our uh, ESV uh, self-study Bible uh, that we have now, yeah. uh, that mm-hmm. they they speak of that as being that that this other group of as being the foolish, and of course that's the word that's used there. Or Leupold says that they're they are. Uh, those who are um, saved from a bed of sickness, because like uh, loathing mm. food and and being at the point of right. death, and then the group of sailors. You know, you can even imagine yourself. It's a that's the fourth group uh, going up uh, on a high wave and then coming down into the deep and so on and then, but then arriving at the desired haven, and and mm-hmm. and then of course each of these groups. Uh, you know, in other words, maybe the priest will say the words of who what they are and what they've done and. Then and they would respond with the antiphon, let them thank the Lord for his chesed, his steadfast love, for right. his wonderful, wondrous works to the children of men. And, of course, even at the beginning of the psalm, too, you have kind of a, an antiphon, but they, they call that, uh, uh, Kyle Dalich calls it an introit <laughs> to the psalm. Yeah, yeah it's sure. Kind of like, you can kind of imagine a liturgical uh, drama, that is uh, yeah. in order to give praise to God, because this is a psalm of thanksgiving, and and that's basically right. what's going on. And if even yeah. if you know, yeah, if, no. uh, he mentions about the about the sacrifices that each of the four groups have sacrifices, uh, that maybe maybe the sacrifice is just simply their praise of God, uh, a sacrifice, uh, a Eucharistic praise of a uh, song mm. of praise and thanksgiving. Right, I will offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, right, as uh, the other psalm goes. Yeah, I, I, th- I appreciate that. I think that that is a really interesting way to think about it. You know, you can kind of imagine that um, every once in a while, I think we do that in church, you know. Um, you've got in the, in the for instance, in our service book, right, like sometimes um, in some of the liturgical elements, you've got, you know, like a, one part will be marked one or two, right, so that you yeah. could actually, or even three, and so you could actually divide the congregation into different voices. Um, I'm sure that once we have a chance to actually gather in person again, something like that might be really cool, just celebrating, you know, the diversity and all the different groups of people that are here together again. It might be really nice to do that um, in church, um, you know, as a part of just hearing the men, hearing the women, hearing the children. Um, but, but right. So you can kind of imagine maybe something like that in a liturgical setting, uh, where these these four different groups, I think also though, um, it makes a lot of sense to have this. And maybe we can talk about this for a minute here, um, as the introductory Psalm to book five, um, because book five, I think, and this is, this is worth talking about here. Um, maybe, I think, I think actually, I feel like of all the five books, I feel like it's kind of easiest to talk about 
five because five mm-hmm. is the one where it's just kind of more overtly it's really about praise right i mean yes. it's just praise hallelujah and thanksgiving hallelujah that's right it, it's got more hallelujahs than any of the other uh other ones all of other five more than the other four um and and it just opens up that way right you know just give thanks and so um and of course uh this is also um following the uh what was it um some of those things thanksgiving psalms so i mean it's just it's just very all about thanksgiving and so if this is to introduce now um the rest right in in psalm uh, 108 we actually have a, a title a song a psalm of david 109 to the choir master a psalm of david so we're going to have like you know um titles for the psalms that follow for many of them but yes. I, I feel like this one kind of almost the whole psalm is almost like you know the title of book five, you know, or at least maybe this, oh, this first yeah. verse. And so in some ways, maybe these four different groups kind of, in a, in a sense, kind of um, represent um, the totality of, of right. all of God's people in the same way that the four directions that are mentioned, east, west, north, and south, is kind of just collective like references, you know, no matter what your situation is, you've got something to be thankful for. This is book five of the Psalms. Exactly. And, and and it's interesting where they mention in, in verse three about gathering from the east and the west, you know, the yeah. it, it refers to like the coming back after the exile in Babylon. And like if you yeah. look at the they, they kind of the commentators like to say that the three Psalms, you know, 107 with the two before it, 105 and 106, 105 deals with the exodus from Egypt 106 yeah. deals with the wandering in the wilderness, and then this one, I mean, you, some could say, well, this is the coming into the land of Canaan, or it could be the coming back of the uh, exiles uh, to uh, the Holy Land, to Judah, after after being in Babylon. And, and, mm-hmm. and of course, they say they kind of explain that because they talk about, uh, you know, they talk about sailing sh- in ships, uh, which was something that really wasn't uh, something that the uh, Israelites really liked to do. They considered the, the ocean as something really scary. And, and, and that's why in, in Revelation chapter 25, it tells us that in, in uh, the, uh, the n- new creation, there will be no more sea. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, but, but anyway, it, it's kind of, it, it's sort of like, but in, in a way that, that this was the way in which the compiler, you know, uh, maybe like Ezra who put all of these together, he, he sort of put them together because they, they had, uh, those themes like that. But, uh, I, I agree with right. you that this is like the title of the whole book because it's, and, and like in even Psalm 136, this, oh, give right. thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy or his chesed endures forever is a constant right. antiphon throughout that psalm. And then these are the psalms, of course, that Jesus and the disciples sang as they went to the Mount of Olives after the Lord's Supper mm-hmm. or after the right. Passover with them. Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that you, you can definitely line this up with, with just broadly, like you're describing the experience of God's people. Um, you know, I mean, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea. We, we we actually looked at, we looked at Psalm 105 and 106, actually, right around Thanksgiving. Um, I think that we did uh, Psalm 105 on like Thanksgiving Day, and I think 106 the, the day after um, but yeah, so we, we, it goes all the way back, like you were saying, to the Exodus, the wilderness wandering. Um, you know, when you when you look at this here, uh, verse four seems to perhaps um, pick that up again. Uh, some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. I'm not sure if that um, you know re- refers you know back to that, or like you were saying, maybe you know, kind of all of this just refers to the exile because we know that and we talked about this a lot when we're looking at isaiah uh, when when those uh babylonians came in there was this diaspora this scattering right and so people just went all over the place to get out of there because you you couldn't stay um i mean you you could um if you if you were lucky if you didn't get deported right because i think that in verse 10 that seems to be the group that is being talked about, right? Talk about the uh, some sitting in the darkness, the shadow of death, prisoners, 
an affliction in irons, right? And in verse 16, the mention of the, the doors of bronze, that we, we saw that in Isaiah several times as uh, an allusion to the gates of Babylon, which were just well known as the, you know, this, you know, these impenetrable series of uh, bronze gates, among other things. So, um, you know, you've got, you've got some that are just, you know, wandering around um, in the wilderness of Judah, um, some who are actually deported off to Babylon. Um, you know, there in, in, in verse 17, uh, you know, the fools, like you were mentioning, it maybe that maybe we'll have to spend more time talking about that, whether that's like you were saying, is that, is that dealing with those who just, you know, became sick? Or is that talking about, um, you know, those who uh, just wound up? I mean, like they, they tried to maybe like write it out, but there was a lack of food and um, there was pestilence, right? And so, um, they, they tried to stick around, but it was just, it was a mess. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, and then that last group, some went down to the sea, um, you know, maybe, maybe they, they tried to just, you know, get, you know, get out of town. Right. Um, like Jonah. What's interesting. Like, like Jonah. Right. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I mean, like we, we know actually in the diaspora that, that, you know, I mean, you had, you had um, Hebrews that went like all the way down South, like way down South deep into Egypt um, others like went went far up north, you know. So you, you talk about Tyre and Sidon, right? And that's way up north. What, what's interesting right. is that we've seen this in Joshua. When you mention those directions, north, south, east, west, east, and west, those words are not just north, south, east, west, right? I mean, the, the words are kind of literally, um, you know, the sunrise, the sea, the mountain, right. <laughs> and the wilderness. Right. Um, and then, yeah, and, all of those are, you know, you, you're in in uh, the uh, Canaan, uh, the, uh, you know, yeah. Palestine. You know, when you talk about the sea, oh, that's the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, that's the yeah. West. And if you're talking yeah. about uh, the, you know, like the River of Egypt or you talk about uh, the mountains, those are in the West. You know, I mean, so so it, it's kind of like uh, really a descriptive um, uh you know, points of the compass and then, but it, but it talks about, they, they kind of know what they're talking about. You go, you know, another thing, another point they made was when you go down into the uh, ships in the sea that you go down because it was mostly a mountainous or a hilly country. And so when you went mm-hmm. to the, to the port to, to embark on a, on a boat, you would go down mm-hmm. from, from, right. uh, and or when St. Right. Paul came to visit the, the church in Jerusalem, it said he went up to visit the church and then he came down. You know, so in other words, he he landed at Caesarea on the on the shore um, and then he went up to Jerusalem and then he and he greeted the church and then he went down and got back on the boat and went back to another missionary journey. <laughs> Right, right. Well, yeah, no, that's right. So you've got all this going up and going down. And, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's always challenging for modern readers, because I think that we're just so used to looking at Google Maps um, these days, that, you know, for us, up is always north, and uh, down is always south. Always south. We're just like, yeah. kind of like, everything is always a mental, uh, you know, map, right? Um, mm-hmm. Looking down from from space, right? But that's just not, exactly. as you were saying, that's just not how they how they thought about it in the past. And so, you know, so this could be just kind of describing all the different possibilities of people trying to make the best of things um, in the situation following the exile or, you know, the best of whatever circumstances they had. Or, you know, it could just kind of be a kind of poetic way of talking about each of the directions, because each of the directions, you know, has a literal meaning, um, which, you know, it's it's actually uh, correlated with, you know, like you were saying, either the, the sea um, you know, that, that's the, the Hebrew word um, for west or, or the north. Uh, I do a Hebrew word for the mountains or the east, the sunrise, which would end up being Babylon right. or the right. south being the wilderness. So it could just be kind of a poetic way of just talking about all the different ways you could go. And each of these are kind of, you know, the north, the south, the east and the west. So right. uh, but. Uh, we have to take a short little break here, but good to kind of get that overview of the thing. Then we'll start getting into each of these groups in detail. Everybody hang on. We're looking at Psalm 107 here on Nice Strong Word. Be right back.
Hello, this is Dr. Dale Meyer. Have you heard Concordia Seminary's program, Word and Work and Intersection? Every week, you can hear it on KFUO Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time. We visit with many interesting guests about how the Word of God applies to their daily vocations and ministries. Be sure to tune in, and may the intersection of Word and Work be busy on your corner. This week on Issues Etc., we'll talk with Pastor Matt Harrison about the church and coronavirus. We'll discuss the Holy Supper in the solid declaration of the Formula of Concord with Pastor Paul McCain, and we'll talk with Pastor Ted Geese about two types of nostalgia-driven entertainment. Issues Etc., live weekday afternoons from 3 to 5 on KFUO. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, on behalf of Concordia Plan Services, Lutheran Housing Support Corporation, Concordia University System, Lutheran Church Extension Fund, the LCMS Foundation, and Corporate Synod, daily reaches out to our members and partners, working together to support our local, global, and international ministries, church workers, and LCMS initiatives at large to carry the mission forward and to serve each other in love. Opportunities to serve, lcms.org slash careers. Welcome back, everybody, to Thy Strong Word. I'm Pastor H.J. Espinosa. We're looking at Psalm 107, not Mark 4. <laughs> Moving on to Mark 4 next time. Uh, we'll get a little eager there, but uh, a lot to look forward to tomorrow. But today, 107, the first psalm of the book 5 of the Psalms, here joined by our guest, Pastor David Boyce Clare, pastor at Faith and Bethesda. Lutheran Churches in Pine Lawn, Missouri, looking forward to being able to open up the doors and gather as God's people again. We were talking about that in this psalm. This kind of depicts uh, perhaps a gathering of God's people there in the temple, all these different groups that have been scattered in all these different directions, up north, down south, east and west. But wherever they have been, now they are all here together, all giving thanks uh, for the ways that God has blessed them and shown his faithfulness and steadfast love in all the many and different ways. So, uh, yeah, a a beautiful picture, Lord willing, of what many of us will begin to experience um, and and sing together. If you've got a question or a comment for us to share, it's a good opportunity to do that. Do that over the phone. You can give us a call, 1-800-730-2727, or if you're in St. Louis, 314-821-0850. Or you can always, if you have a question for me or Pastor Boyce Claire, give us an email, kfuo at kfuo.org. Also want to make sure to thank our underwriters at the Lutheran Heritage Foundation, their website, lhfmissions.org. Speaking of giving thanks, thank you guys. So, uh, yeah, so turn, turning to this then here um, in a little little more detail. So um, we've we kind of broken it down. You see the four different groups, uh, the four different you know sections, how – you know, maybe this is kind of you know poetic in a way of doc- talking about the different directions here. Um, you know, may- maybe it's kind of literally all the different situations um, in the wake of the Babylonian invasion of Israel. Uh, but just looking then at this first section, the intro, as uh, as you put it earlier, uh, of 107 here, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Um, yeah, certainly a fitting title for the whole. Psalm, yep. which, uh, and, or, or perhaps all of Book Five, book. which in many ways, may, may, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just saying yes, uh, the Psalm and the whole and the whole book itself, yes. Right, just, right, just and, um, <laughs> and okay, yeah, 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 no, no, no. I, I'm on the phone today, and so the connection is just like not not quite as uh, optimal as it always is today. But we're we're going to get it, we're going to get it. Um, but yeah, so it's um, it's also I think should sound familiar to a lot of people because it is the first uh, verse um, that is used in the returning thanks prayer that we have in the catechism, right? Um, yes. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good; His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord gives food to every creature, to the cattle and to the young ravens when they call. Um, and, and all the rest. And, you, and this is the traditional prayer that um, has been used by Lutherans after the meal, you know, which uh, I, I actually, I really, I really like because it's like, hey, if someone like joins you halfway, you can still catch uh, catch them on the way out, right? You still have a chance to pray together. And um, it's the prayer that we're working on right now 
with uh, with my three year old Ellie um, and our one year old Natalie, and uh, they're they're learning it well. They're and they're, they they like this one. They like the the mention of the the ravens and the and the cattle, which are actually from a a different psalm, but uh, Luther had pieced them together, but introduced them here with very fittingly Psalm 107, verse 1, because that is really the introduction for all the psalms, including the ones that he quotes from later. Right. A- exactly. And uh, and then, well, really, it, it showcases, like a beautiful frame, golden frame, God's chesed. Uh, his, well, it's translated mercy in uh, the King James Version. It's translated loving kindness in the New American Standard Bible. And it's translated as steadfast love here in our ESV. But that's, it's kind of, uh, we're, we're, we're extolling and praising his chesed in this psalm. Right, right. Well, yeah, no, and, that, and that's certainly, um, you know, something that you see again, and again, throughout the Psalms, um, and, and, and for instance, when you, when you go out to uh, Psalm, what is it, like 136, I'm trying to recall, yes. um, where, where it is, uh, yeah, you actually have almost the exact same thing later, give thanks to the Lord for, for he is good. So uh, his steadfast love endures forever. So, I mean, this, this, is a, this is a common theme in the Psalms, I and mean, of course, in um, the scriptures in general, right? It's this word, as you were saying, chesed, um, over and over. No, we talked about it a little bit here, but I think in this context, like you were saying, of uh, the exile of all the different directions on the compass, right? Um, chesed, that faithfulness idea, right? I think the yeah. idea is that that constancy, that no matter what uh, time we're dealing with, whether it's you know back in the days of um, Egypt or back in the wilderness wandering or in the exile, no matter what place, north, south, east, west, right, mountains, wilderness, um, you know, sea or out in the east in the sunrise, right? No matter where, no matter when, God is good, and and He is faithful. He that is His His name, as Luther said, is truth and faithfulness, and He's always there right. for us. You know, even if we are unfaithful, you know, it's sad. Uh, sometimes people talk about uh, those who abuse animals, uh, like they might abuse a, a dog or something, and but the dog. Uh, you know, sort of uh, unconditionally even comes back to his or her abuser and and still uh, wants to show love and and faithfulness and it and and that's the way the Lord is, no matter how sinful we are. Uh, you know, there 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 should be no despair. People should not uh, give up and think that they're they have nobody because they have the Lord who who is faithful. His his uh, steadfast love endures forever. Uh, amen. I mean, it's um, yeah, that that faithfulness that that um, you know, no matter what happens, no matter how bad God's people have been, again and again, right? I mean, just think about the exile, of course, right? I mean, you know, we we show faithlessness to God um, and uh, require um, discipline. I mean, I, I think that you know this this psalm gets at it too. Um, in verse eleven, they had rebelled against the words of God, spurning the counsel of the Most High, right? So you have that juxtaposition, right? Again and again, God's people show faithlessness, um, especially, and especially very bad ways from time to time. Um, but God's just faithful no matter what. So it's in both senses of being faithful, faithful um, in terms of being uh, having integrity and consistency and constancy that no matter what, no matter when, um, but then also, you know, like you were just saying, in the face of faithlessness, um, even still, um, God never rejecting his people. So, yeah, I think both senses uh, make good sense uh, here. Um, they, they make sense in the context of, uh, you know, giving, giving things for food or just any of the basic, um, you know, ways that God takes care of us on a day-to-day basis. Um, interesting that in verse 2 and verse uh, I think we've kind of already talked about verse three. Then um, it uses that word "redeemed," right? Yeah. Um, which is which is that word that is, is that we've talked about before. It's kind of hard to understand in our own context because it's a family word, right? Um, you know that this this goel, this um, yeah. this word that's the the avenger of blood. Um, it's a, kind of a family advocate in like a legal context who might show up to court on your behalf, right? 
Um, but there's this idea, right, of, of being in God's family, having God be the one who avenges um, avenges our blood, who advocates for the family, who um, you know uh, marries marries us, the w- widows we are, right? Like as uh, Boaz and Ruth, right? So, um, and very interesting that that word pops up here. Well, that's central. That's that's gospel. That's what that's what Christ is to us. You know, He is our Goel. He is our Redeemer. Mm-hmm. And and um, you know, just like you know, it, it, a lot of in looking at this psalm, the commentators uh, point out the uh, the parallels with uh, Isaiah and with Job, where where you had have people that are under affliction and and. Um, uh, and, and Job, of course, in the midst of his affliction, says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that he will stand yeah. on the earth. And though after uh, worms have destroyed this body in my flesh, I will see God, which is, of course, the promise of the resurrection, because he has redeemed us by his life, death right. and resurrection. Right. right. Well, yeah, so you get that, that, that Goel word there, too. And it's interesting how it I mean, in, in that context there. Right. I mean, Job is. He's looking for an advocate there. He's looking for someone to come and vindicate him, right? Like yeah. to say, yeah, no, like you're you're right, Job. You don't deserve this, right? Um, it, it's interesting how that word, you know, go ale is just is very diverse, you know, comparing, you know, the context there in Job, like you were describing to, you know, Ruth, right? But yeah. I, I think that, that that is a lot, as you were saying, um, to do with why this redeemer word gets used of the Lord Jesus Christ, because there's just so many different pictures, right, in the New Testament about how Jesus, our Lord, saves us, whether he is the, as in Ruth, the, the husband of the church, right? Um, right, whether he is, you know, the advocate. And that, that's kind of the word that you get in the Gospel of John. We, we saw that you have this um, this advocate language that the Spirit is an advocate, that the Son is an advocate with the Father on our behalf. That kind of intercessory idea, maybe closer to Job. Um, so there's all these different kinds of ways of, of looking at it. I mean, even Avenger, right? The idea that right. um, the Lord Jesus, we, we saw in Revelation, right? That he will not um, just let his people suffer and be persecuted, but he will avenge them. So um, he'll vindicate us. So all these different different threads throughout the Old Testament, all these different ways of thinking about Goel, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that that's just, of course, how you see the faithfulness of God in the biggest way. So, yeah, I mean, this uh, this this short little introduction of just three verses is just very profound in the way it ties together, not even just all of Book Five, but I mean, really all the different scriptural themes. Exactly. Um, well, you know, last thing, last thing about the introduction here before we move on. Um, so there there is this interesting little question: What is actually the first word? of the, of the Psalm. Um, because here, like we were just saying, you got, um, I, I actually, I don't even know the answer to this question. Um, in, in the English translation in the, in the ESV, you've got, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Whereas, um, you know, like for instance, uh, Psalm 136 just says, give thanks to the Lord, um, as in Psalm 105. So I don't know why the O is there. Um, <laughs> I, I, like it's the same word in well, Hebrew a, either way. It's, a, it's like but, a justive, you know, uh, in other words, that it, it's sort of like, uh, you know, kind of saying, come on, let's do this uh, uh, type of thing. Le, uh, yeah. ho, hodu is the is the uh, Hebrew word uh, that is used here, 107 and in 105. And, and so yeah. it's it's g- give thanks to the Lord. Oh, even Allah, hallelujah is a is a justive as well. Praise the Lord. Sort of let's praise him. Let's come on. Yeah. Let's get. Let's get uh, the lead out and let's let's uh, give him thanks and give him praise. You know, come on, let's hear what you got. <laughs> kind of like a cheer yeah. cheerleading. We well, well I mean, and, and you mentioned and you and you mentioned Alleluia, right? And so, and yeah. so that's that's actually where where I was going. That in the Septuagint in, in the Greek um, edition of this Psalm, Alleluia is actually the first verse of the Psalm. So that, that's kind of an interesting right. little bit there. That if you look at Psalm 106, right, the way it concludes, and let all the people say Amen. Well, in the Greek, there, Amen, the last word of Psalm 106, which you think, oh, okay, that actually makes sense. You know, Amen is yeah. the uh, is the last word right there. Um, and and then that praise the Lord there at the end of Psalm 106. That's actually the introductory word of Book Five. So, 
that's um I, I think that's kind of interesting that you know uh, we were just talking about you know how Psalm one uh, one hundred and seven introduces this book five, which is you know just so full of alleluias that you know maybe maybe in a, a certain sense maybe alleluia really kind of belongs actually in here that this is really the, the alleluia book of the yes. five psalms. Yes. This is uh, the book five, and, and, and I mean at least that might be why. Anyway, some some copies went there just because you ha- you have that the Alleluia theme so so strong and I mean and that's certainly an overlap we had with Re- Revelation which 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 had Alleluia in it. Exactly, it's probably if you're thinking about Greek, of course, it it would be if it might be Alleluia, but it would have a rough breathing mark there. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd oh, still right. have yeah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure whether that works out if you look at your Greek, but, it, you know, with Greek, you don't have an H. Uh, you would just have that, that comma that's uh, facing toward the letter. <laughs> sort right, of rough right, right. mark, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that's right. Well, and, and, uh, and if, well, I mean, either way, regardless of the breathing mark, I mean, it, it stopped being pronounced, and that's why that, that that was always something that as a as a child that 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 made me wonder like, hang on, why do we say hallelujah sometimes, and why do we say hallelujah sometimes? Well, exactly because they stopped pronouncing the breathing mark in Greek, so it just didn't matter, and so it just became hallelujah, right? But yes. Same word, same same word, right? So, yeah. um, so yeah, so kind of kind of interesting to think about that may, maybe hallelujah alle, in some way. Um, just, I mean, is really kind of a very good summary of what this thing is all about. Um, exactly. Kind of, kind of taking uh, a little bit of a faster pace here now. Let, let's c- look at each one of these directions um, or scenarios here. So, yes. v- verses four to nine. Uh, some water in the desert wastes, and uh, we, we mentioned that the that the word in Hebrew for the south um, is is the wilderness. So maybe this is like the, the southern situation or the wandering situation here. Um, so what, what do we what do we make of of this situation here? Hungry, thirsty, crying to the Lord, a straight way. These these seem like actually familiar themes that get picked up on in the New Testament. Yeah, I mean, it, it, what the only the thing is is it kind of directs us into our spiritual lives. Uh, you know, like Christ says, blessed are the poor, or blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom right. of heaven. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, it's it's like right. we're we're like wandering in a desert when we when we do not have the Lord, uh, when we do not have forgiveness, right. when we are uh, when you know when we're sinning, or you know when when we live in sin, or when I mean that is our of course natural condition that we are born with original sin and and we are born enemies of God, and so it's like we're wandering in the desert. There's no food there, and and there's no water there. And of course, Jesus reminds us, though, as it says, um, you know, it, when when he was tempted uh, by Satan to make uh, bread from the rocks, there he says, "Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God." And so, and so here, I guess, and then then I kind of like to think that that when the Lord had His people for forty years in the desert, He was training them to believe that, right. to realize it isn't, right. you know, if you have food, you don't have. Any, let's say you have a lot of money, you have all kinds of, or have food even, it, it, you're still dependent solely on God, and that's what it teaches. That's you. right. Yeah. So I, I think I think that's a that's a good summary. Like it's. You know, you have hungry, you have the hunger and the thirst and the wandering, um, that, that sense of, you know, wandering, straying. You know, you think of the Lord's parable about, you know, uh, the, the sheep, you know, straying and things like this. Um, but but then also, as you were saying, you, you see God training his own people. And in fact, um, you mentioned the Beatitudes there, you know, hungry and thirsty. That is, you know, in the Greek, it's the it's the same exact words that occur in the Beatitudes, right? Like, blessed yes. are those who hunger and thirst, in the Greek, um, same, same exact phrase right there. You see that picked up in the Beatitudes um, there in verse nine, he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. That gets quoted by the mother of our Lord, Mary, um, in the Magnificat, right? He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Um, so you know we 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 sing that um, in in our liturgy even right so you know you um 
you, you get you get this picked up in a in a really big way in the New Testament, especially there in Luke, you know, which has the Beatitudes and the Magnificat, um, where you're just talking about, you know, hey, um, God has really, if you, if you think that He did this before, you know, bringing us out of exile, providing us for food, and bringing us out of the uh, wandering wastes, right? Well, think about when He sent John the Baptist in the wilderness to, and as it says in verse seven, make straight the way of the Lord. Um, and then, you know, he fills the hungry with good things when he, you know, comes to the peasants like Mary and Joseph and sends the savior of the world who multi- multiplies the loaves and gives the, the bread from heaven, right? I mean, I mean, the gospels, I, I feel like are very deliberately picking up on this wandering wilderness, um, hungry and thirsty thing in a, in a exactly. pretty profound way. Exactly. And, and uh, it's interesting, in, in, the, in the latter part of the psalm, it is kind of like a, a, a wording, which is from verse 43 to, uh, 33 to 43, sounds like the Magnificat, where it says he turns the lush land into a uh, desert, and he turns the desert into a uh, lush land, you know, I mean, he... Mm-hmm. he or you know he gives the hungry good things with the rich he sends away empty you know he he puts down pulls down the mighty ones and lifts up the the, the yeah. lowly ones that that's yeah, the theme that's right. yeah, that reversal there. language there yeah it, it's a, it sounds like thematically a lot like the magnificat um they're also almost like exact quotes out of Isaiah at uh, different uh, different points right like uh he turns the desert into pools of water parched land into springs of water. I mean, that's like almost straight out of Isaiah yep. um, 41, talking about the return from exile. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's um, very much along the same lines where it's just kind of like the exile multiplied in, in um, the Magnificat that you have. Um, so really quick here, moving on to the next section, verses 10 to 16. So now you got this, you know, um, those sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death, right? So, and we talked about that in verse 16, you know, the doors of bronze. So this it would seem to be the group that we're talking about that went east, that went off to Babylon, right? Yeah. Um, Isaiah yeah. 45, I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron, right? So th- this seems to be a very direct, you know, these are the ones who actually got shipped out, you know, and who are in there, like, you know, Daniel and his friends, right? Um, but but so But so here, I think what's so interesting is that you get repeated. The description is um, darkness and the shadow of death. That that seems to be a description of Babylon, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And and uh, you know th- this is kind of like takes us into Advent. Uh, you know, you're reminded of uh, you know the one hark the glad sound. There was the one stanza goes. He comes the prisoners to release and Satan's bondage held. The gates of brass before him burst. The iron fetters yield. Uh, in this case, and then there's the contrast of the what manner in which people built their cities with wooden doors and wooden uh, law, or you know boltings. But here they're saying it's like we're imprisoned in in bronze and iron. So we're really yeah. we're really imprisoned in in uh, uh, you know this type of oppression, right? Well, yeah, no, cer- certainly. And so when the Lord then comes proclaiming, you know, release for the captives is what He says, right? Yes. Um, and He talks about you know in His con- uh, some of His condemning words, you know, um, you know whoever sins is a slave to sin, right? You know, here He is coming around talking about this, and everyone's like, "What are you talking about? We've already been released from." Um, the slavery and the shadow of death that is Babylon. We're not in Babylon anymore. Um, but the Lord's sort of like, well, but aren't you? Right? I mean, and that's, mm-hmm. and that's, I think, what we always saw in Revelation, that, you know, spiritually, Jerusalem had become a Babylon all yeah. over again. So, I, I mean, I, th- I think that idea of, um, you know, darkness and what everything that John does, you know, the light shines in the darkness. Um, I, I, think, I think, yeah, that that's just really picking it up like, hey, you can be in the darkness of the shadow of death in Babylon, even when you're in Jerusalem, you think to yourself, right? So, um, I mean, I think that's a very, it's very powerful the way that, that this is spiritualized and expanded in the New Testament. Um, exactly. Okay, so moving on really, really quick here. Next section here then. So, so some were fools through their sinful ways, right? The loathing of food, the being healed. So, um, you know, just, just kind of, uh, by process of elimination, this would 
correspond with the north <laughs> um, with, with the mountains um, I don't know how you get that necessarily but any case so yeah so what what do you think of this uh, this third section here I mean I don't know it seems like it's it's, it's dire straits um, is, is, is kind of the bottom line here well I I, I, I kind of like uh, the interpretation that it's referring to people who are on the bed of sickness uh, they're afflicted, um, and 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 they they can't eat anymore. Uh, but but obviously it 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 could also mean people that are suffering from uh, pestilence, like uh, you know people that that are in danger of dying from from. Uh, uh, but but again, it's like they're in they're 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 in danger of death. And 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 right. God, of course, uh, raises them up, or he he uh, the the one verse there. Uh, where he sends he he sends his word, uh, the word is sent and they are healed. Uh, that right. that's very important. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I was reading Luther's uh, interpretation of his of Galatians in fifteen nineteen, and he says he mentions this this psalm, and he says that you have that verse beca- which says that uh, they uh, that they sent he sent his word, and, and of course Christ is the word God the word. And um, and he is sent to uh, deliver us by his word of the gospel. Right, right. Well, that that is that is really interesting. I mean, you think, of course, of the uh, of the the healing of uh, the centurion servant, right? You know that it's just just the word, right? You know, and he and he says, "Hey, I too am under authority. Just say the word, and I know that's going to be enough, right?" Um, and of course, what the Lord says, right? That. Uh, you know, man will not live by um, bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord, right? So just the idea that it's ultimately, you know, yeah, yes, of course, you know, food associated with health, right? You know, eat healthy food if you want to be healthy, sure. But ultimately, the word of God being that which which heals us. So, I mean, that, that's, that's just very interesting. And, and there might be some, I think, connections there with maybe actually even the mountains. Uh, and, and we saw that a little bit in Isaiah, how, um, you know, up in the mountains, the high places that was associated with um, worship places for other gods, you know, places where you might go yes. and seek healing. Um, so, that, so that maybe actually there is a little bit more of a thematic connection there, the idea of like, where are you, where are you looking for for your healing, right? Um, you know, what, what are you counting on to? get you through the tough times um you know these other gods or is it the word of the lord so uh last section then looking at 23 to 32 um yeah so now now you got the west the mediterranean the the seas right Um, and this is the one i think that kind of obviously ties into mark what we were saying right um where we were (laughs) just looking at i was kind of jumping the gun talking about mark 4 this seems to narrate the calming of the, of of the storm actually yeah, right exactly that's the first thing yeah and 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 that was probably uh what was in the mind of the um you know the evangelists as they wrote about that they were they were thinking about yeah. the times in which god stills the tempest and 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 that you know he's the master of of nature you know the the lord he's the god of all things the god of the universe the god who uh, stills uh, every all of our enemies and and brings us everlasting life through Christ. Amen. So yeah, no, I, I don't think that they they could have written about that without thinking of these psalms, which they would have intimately known. So um, yeah, that that rounding out the section and and then just you know those last words again, um, echoing the Magnificat. Whoever is wise, let him attend these things. You know, ponder these things in your heart, as as our uh, Lord's mother Mary did. Thank you so much, brother, looking at this amazing psalm. Um, God bless you guys. Looking forward to us all being able to open up again. God bless your Easter tide, and talk to you again real soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody, that was Pastor David Boyce, Claire of Faith and Bethesda, Lutheran Church in Pine Lawn, Missouri. Moving on to Mark 4. Till then, Pastor A.J. Espinosa. Senate Office of National Mission in cooperation with Worldwide KFUO, the official broadcast ministry of the LCMS. Your support is vital for this program to continue. You can make a gift safe, secure, and easily online at kfuo.org. Thank you for listening and supporting Thy Strong Word.